Hello everyone, welcome again to Level Chain Channel. My name is Claudio Fonseca. I'm a real world uh, Boeing 777 pilot. And uh, here we are again after two months without recording a video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about something that I'm waiting for a long time. Uh, the nav data update for the 737. I'm actually uh expecting this change uh for the past few years uh since microsoft uh, flight simulator x maybe uh when i was flying the 737 in real life and i wanted to train rnp ar procedures into this airport that you see on your screen right now uh, santos dumont airport in uh, rio de janeiro brazil okay uh to start i want to let you know that this is going to be a long video i'm going to actually pause the recording a couple of times because we are going to divide uh, this video uh, at least in four segments okay uh, the first segment i'm going to explain to you uh what is the approach that we are going to fly uh, what does it mean rnp ar this ar as well not only the rnp so i'm going to explain the procedure to you then i want to explain uh, airplane selection okay right now you can see i have a 737 uh, 800 uh, on runway in rio de janeiro but this is not the airplane that I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly with the 737-700 and I'm going to explain you why, okay? Uh, so this is the second part of the video. Then the third part of the video, I'm going to uh, fly the first RNPAR with the old PMDG navigation data. Okay, so I'm going to show you how uh, this procedure used to work on PMDG, uh, the problems that we had doing the procedure, this RNPAR procedure before the update. Okay, and then on the fourth part of the video, I'm going to install the update for the 737 and we are going to fly together for me for the first time uh, this uh, update I'm going to show you the differences and then uh, let's see how this uh, new navigation data works okay I didn't do any test on the new navigation data I still have the old one I didn't update my 737 and uh, that's the reason uh, why this is the first video I'm recording after these uh, two months okay uh, some uh, time that I had to take uh, for myself out of uh, YouTube channel for uh, the past four years this was the first time that I was out of YouTube even when I had uh, uh, some uh, leave before I always left uh, some videos prepared for the leave so it was keep going some videos while I was on leave so this was the first time after uh, four years of channel that I decided uh, to take the leave and also take the leave from YouTube as well uh, it took a little longer than I was expecting two months I was actually involved I'm still involved in another project uh, that I'm going to update you uh, later on uh, but those were the reasons why I didn't uh, upload a video and that's why this is the first video then uh, because I want uh, to shoot this video uh, with the old navigation database for you to see the difference and then I upgrade uh, my sim or actually I update my sim to the new one and we start uh, the videos again especially the ones related to the 777 which is the airplane that already includes the new navigation database so that's why I'm expecting to run smoothly on the 737 as well okay so let's jump ahead and let's go uh, to the first part of the video which is uh, what is the RNPAR and the procedure that we are going to shoot right now okay here we are uh, I have Navigraph for you 
Uh, so we are in Rio de Janeiro, Santos Dumont Airport, and we are going to perform the RNP Whiskey Runway 0 to right, and you can see here AR. Okay, is the first uh, or sorry, is the same thing on the right side. Uh, let me take this. Let me take a zoom here, and what we are going to do here, uh, I want to show you Santos Dumont Airport in Rio de Janeiro, okay, Brazil. I'm going to talk a lot about this chart because this defines the procedure that we are doing and there are a lot of complicated things here, okay? Uh, so, as I was telling you, this is the Santos Dumont Airport. This chart uh, is has an index number of 22-21. This is just Jeppesen index so uh, 22 is the number of the airport here in Rio de Janeiro you will see 21 most probably Rio de Janeiro Galeão 22 is Rio de Janeiro Santos Dumont and the chart 21 this is uh, the index for the chart as you can see RNP uh, X-ray is the chart 20 and uh, Tango is 22 okay so this is just a list what is important also is that this procedure was uh, created uh, or actually uh, send it to Navigraph uh, with a date of 8th of July 22 but uh, just to be effective on the 14th of July same year 2022 okay this is for airplanes category Alpha Bravo and Charlie basically categories Delta and Echo cannot do this procedure this is what it means here and the name of the procedure RNP require navigation performance whiskey this is the number or name of the procedure for runway zero to right and here we have AR which means AR is authorization required and we are going to see this one here oops sorry I pressed the wrong button let me just come back here so this means uh, this is an RNPAR approach and RNPAR means special aircraft and aircrew authorization required okay this is what AR mean authorization required so you need special aircraft and uh, special crew to do this procedure basically you need an airplane that is capable of doing it and you need the crew trained to do it okay so I'm going to clear all uh, uh, sorry one more time I'm going to clear everything and we are going to start discussing this uh, procedure the standard things you have the frequencies I'm not going to talk about them but these are the standard frequencies that you are going to see on all Jeppesen charts uh, then you have uh, the um, usually here uh, you have the frequency for the procedure as this is an RNAV procedure the RNP is an RNAV procedure is a area navigation procedure with required navigation performance okay so RNP is also an area navigation um, procedure so here you see RNAV because that is no navade okay then you have final approach course the final approach course is 020 you have final approach fix Romeo Juliet 802 altitude there 1540 feet elevation of 1531 feet for the RNP 0.01 you have a decision height of 305 feet which is basically 296 feet uh, high on that approach at this stage airport elevation is 10 feet and the runway elevation is 9 okay so basically because the runway elevation the highest point on the touchdown zone is 9 feet that is the difference okay so at uh, a DA sorry a DA a decision altitude of 305 feet 305 feet you will be 296 feet above your highest elevation on the touchdown zone runway 02 okay uh, so why do we have an special aircraft and special aircrew why this is AR okay why do you have this a couple of things can uh, transform 
the procedure into a special authorization required okay uh, what takes this procedure as special authorization required is the RNP required for this approach which is 0 0.10 okay basically all the crews around the world they are trained to do any RNAV or any RNP procedure RNAV RNP down to 0 0.3 or 0 0.30 okay so basically when we talk about the required navigation performance that the airplane needs to meet during the approach sorry we are talking about RNPs on the initial segment and intermediate segment okay so from the initial approach fix going through the intermediate fix down to the final approach fix which is i would just want to make sure which is 802 you can see here final approach point or final approach fix which is this one uh 802 okay so all the way from here when you are flying all the way to 802 you need rnp 1.0 okay this is standard okay if it's different than 1.0 you are going to see that specified on the approach then on a standard rnav approach or standard rnp approach from your final approach point your final approach fix all the way down to the runway the standard rnp is 0 0.3 okay so this on this procedure is 0 0.1 okay so that's why this is one of the reasons why this approach is authorization required and for the missed approach from the runway itself from the runway point or the missed approach point all the way to your missed approach fix again you need rnp of 1.0 okay so this is the standard for anyone okay so today 0 0.3 is not valid we have and we need a better precision for this approach which is 0 0.1 okay so a ten of a mile is our rnp uh, so we need 0 0.1 for this approach and this is the reason one of the reasons why this procedure is an rnp okay another thing uh, so this is the reason why this is uh, one of the reasons for the authorization required okay the other one is that this procedure here on the notes it also states that rf is required okay radio to fix basically this is an dme arc uh, from an imaginary point okay uh, basically rf means a constant turn that you are going to see here also here and also here okay uh, I'm not sure yeah you also have this constant turn here on the missed approach okay so this is another reason why you need uh, a special airplane to do this and a special crew qualification because one of the important things for this kind of procedure is not that the airplane is capable of doing this procedure but every time that you have this turn and you can identify that this turn is there here on Jeppesen charts when you see this information here right turn arc right turn arc and later on here also you have 
a left turn arc okay so these are two right turn arcs and one left turn arc during your approach okay so these two right turns here and this left turn here so uh, the important thing for the pilots is that when you have this kind of arc this kind of RF legs radio to fix legs we cannot fly direct to the point that is the beginning of this turn so we cannot fly direct to 801 we cannot fly direct to 802 we cannot fly direct to uh, 083 and also on the missed approach we cannot fly direct to 901 okay we can only fly to these points through the designated procedure itself okay so for to go from uh, or actually to go to Romeo Juliet 801 it's mandatory that we fly on course 134 towards 801 and then it's mandatory that we arrive at 801 going towards 802 it's mandatory that we cross 802 inbound 803 until we are uh, at 804 and then it's mandatory that we cross or that we go towards 901 on the final approach course which is 020 okay so basically what I'm telling you is that to perform this approach I cannot accept the radar vectors here and fly direct to to this point and expect my airplane to comply with all of this why this is a very specific procedure not only this but many are NPARs they are very specific uh, to this because they will protect the airplane uh, from in this case all the mountains that we have here on the southwest sector of this approach okay if you fly the the procedure correctly on the speeds altitudes you are not supposed to get any e e g p w s okay any on this case echo means enhanced ground proximity warn system alert okay so you are not supposed to get any alert from the terrain around you okay i'm not sure if this happens or not on uh, the pmdg okay let's see uh, maybe you are going to get uh, some alerts around here because of the mountains uh, i hope that these alerts go away uh, once the new navigation database is implemented if it doesn't go it's because uh, there are some also some specific data uh, for these airports uh, for these uh, procedures that needs to be included in the EGPWS system as well okay but basically you are not supposed to get any alert and keep the EGPWS on okay a uh, couple of things about this procedure that I also want to show you uh, minimum temperature to perform this procedure is 10 degrees maximum is 45 actually you can fly outside these temperatures but then in this case you cannot uh, this procedure you cannot fly at all okay some procedures they will have uh, different minimas not for LNAV VNAV but this procedure you only have the minimas for LNAV VNAV so you need to be uh, within this temperature okay let me just uh, show you another one uh, like this it doesn't even specify um, yeah here in Rio they did a little bit different uh, but basically it's telling you uh, as the only minimas for this approach are the RNP 0.1 only LNAV and VNAV approach you cannot do when the temperature is below 10 or when the temperature is above 45 okay uh, also it says do not perform RNP transition of missed approach before 0 .87, 0 0.87 miles from runway 0 to right okay uh, what this means what this means transition of missed approach uh, so I told you that during the initial approach we have initial intermediate approach we have 
a required navigation performance of 1.0. Then for this chart, you have 0 0.1 for the final approach segment and then 1.0 again uh, for uh, the missed approach. Okay, the standard will be 1.0, 0 0.3 and then 1.0 again. But for this procedure, I already show you that we go from 1.0 to 0 0.1 and then back to 1.0 for the missed approach. But what this note is telling you is that you cannot switch from this 0 0.1 to 1.0 before 0 0.87 miles from the runway, okay? Uh, basically, you cannot switch before Romeo Juliet 094. As you can see here is 0 0.9, which is basically 0 0.87. So you, if you are performing a missed approach, what this actually means is if you are performing a missed approach on this procedure from any point before the runway, okay, you need to maintain your required navigation performance of 0 0.1 until you reach 0 0.84. Basically, if you are at 8.02 and you decide to go around, you have to keep 0 0.1 navigation performance to perform all this turn with the required 0 0.1 and then you go around. Because this is the only required navigation performance that will keep you safe and away from the terrain that you have around this airport, okay? So, this is the fourth note, okay? Uh, the fifth note is that the vertical path for this approach, uh, which is here, uh, 2.85, okay, is not coincident with the puppy okay and then if you go to just as out of curiosity to the airport chart uh, we go to the information here we are going to see that runway zero to right the puppy for this procedure is 3.23 so basically here you have the runway and then you have your approach so for the lights that are here on the right side you have an angle of 3.23 but for the approach itself the one that we are shooting how we come on this approach we are coming slightly shallow uh, 2.85 if I'm not mistaken, let's just confirm. Okay, this is this is the difference. So basically, you are going to see three reds uh, when you are uh, on the beginning of your late or your initial moments when you are aligned with the runway, and you should cross later on, uh, more or less at the same point because the difference, as you can see here, the difference is decreasing as you are approaching the runway okay so let's just go back to that one yeah 2.85 that's the one uh, we are uh, looking for okay so this is what means sorry let's clear this one more time this is what means vertical path and puppy not coincident okay you have one is 2.85 the other one is 3.20 something 23 if i'm not mistaken okay so those are uh, the notes okay a couple of other things about this procedure uh, usually the altitudes that we have on the chart they are minimum altitudes okay so if you go here and if you see romeo juliet 031 3500 this is minimum altitude okay but at gelut we have 6000 and a ball number one B ball number one they say that this altitude is mandatory so you have to cross gelut at 6000 not above not below then romeo juliet 931 it also states mandatory 4800 different ways for uh, jefferson to tell you that this is a mandatory altitude okay here there was no space for them to write mandatory here so they included a ball on the second one they wrote mandatory okay uh, 
another thing if we go down here uh, you will see that it doesn't show any mandatory okay so 2700 or above 1850 or above uh, 15 uh, 40 or above and then 1162 or above okay uh, so actually when we think about these altitudes here even though they are minimum altitudes we we can call them as uh, recommended altitudes for this uh, procedure okay so you are going to see these altitudes there on the procedure uh, as uh, 2700 or above but those are the recommended ones actually the minimum altitudes for each segment is here 1800 uh, okay uh, so these are the minimum altitudes actually uh, minimum safe altitudes for this segment okay this is 50 feet different and this is 10 feet difference so this is the margin that you have on this uh, type of approach okay another thing that it's very important is that we uh, have in mind the speeds okay so if you go here you will see romeo juliet 801 maximum 160 knots 802 maximum 140 knots 803 maximum 140 knots uh, and you also have this information here okay 801 maximum 60 802 maximum 140 803 maximum 140 during the entire turn also maximum 140 uh, for this turn okay so you need to be careful with these altitudes okay um, another thing and this is something that i i don't like uh, the way it's represented on the jeppesen charts but they say missed approach climb to mandatory 5500 maintain course 092 until romeo juliet uh, 901 after right turn after sorry turn right until 902 after maintain course 145 until every for holding okay and then it specifies rnp below 1.0 from runway 0 0.2 until 902 uh, okay that's my yeah so what it says here that you have an rnp below 1.0 uh, until 902 uh, which is actually it doesn't show us how much on this chart but basically what I told you is that you do not transition from missed approach below 087 it is also telling us that we should maintain our RNP uh, below uh, 1.0 all the way to 902 okay so basically you need this 0 0.1 all the way to 902 but then look at 902 you also have two information here maximum 2000 feet so basically you do not climb straight away to mandatory 5500 you have to stop at 2000 maximum 175 knots that is also not described on the missed approach procedure it's only described on the graphical part so your standard or your initial missed approach is going to be 2000 feet maximum 175 knots and when you cross 902 then you climb to your mandatory 5 thousand five hundred feet and then you also from after 902 you do not have this uh 175 knots uh restriction anymore this 175 knots it's because of this turn here okay because if you are really fast you are not capable of performing this right arc turn here towards 902 okay so a couple of things that uh, sometimes is not very clear because if you read the missed approach uh, it doesn't give you all the information that you need okay you need to see on the chart that there is a maximum 2000 feet at 902 as well okay and also speed is also only represented on the graphical part 
not on the missed approach description okay uh, let me see if there is anything else that we can talk about here our standard uh, information okay so everything else is standard as any other uh, approach okay so this is the procedure that we are going to to shoot uh, I'm going to explain now uh, why I going to perform the procedure with a uh, 737 700 and not an 800 as it was shown in the beginning of the video okay so the next step is to explain to you why i'm not using the 737 800 okay here we are back to the sim and i want to show you a couple of things uh, let's go inside our airplane uh, i'm going to go back to this uh, procedure really soon uh, but one thing that i want to show you is if you go to your index and approach okay uh, I want to show you that let's say close to our maximum landing weight on this airplane uh, which is 65,000 kilos sorry I have to add only 65 right 65.0 okay so close to 65,000 kilos you have a flaps 40 VRF of 141 okay what does this 141 means? Uh, let me go back to one procedure here. And... Uh, okay, it's ready. Let me show you. If I go to a very old Boeing quick reference handbook, you are going to see that when we talk about the 737-800 whiskey with winglets, okay? This is a 737-800 a already with winglets. The initial ones, they didn't have the winglets, okay? So the winglets are bringing uh, the airspeed uh, or the VRF for your approach slightly down. And when we come here to 65 tons, you will see that the uh, speed for flaps 40 is 141. Okay, if I select there 85, you will see 160, and if I select 40, you will see 108. Okay, so let's go back, select 85 and 40, so you can see uh, this on our sim as well. Okay, that now we are back to the sim, I'm going to select 85, you will see 160, and if I select 140, you will see 108 so basically everything that is on this uh, table is matching our pmdg airplane okay but i want to show you that this is a 737-800 not a short field performance or not the latest short field performance if I use the same manual, I just go to a different page and here you are going to see in green that I have a 737-800 also with winglets but SFP1, you will see that for uh, 65 tons my speed is 139 and not 141. For 85 is 159 and not 161 and for flaps uh, sorry for 40 uh, tons is 107 and not 139 what does that mean first for our airplane category if we think about uh, this is something I didn't prepare but uh, we can discuss this together if I go to Google and I'm going to type here uh, air plane approach category speeds okay so you are going to see here that for 
category C, for an airplane to be category C, maximum speed is 140 knots, okay? And this is the speed that uh, is not related to your uh, current weight. But for the category of the airplane, it's at maximum landing weight. In this case, for the 7, uh, sorry, uh, for the 737, yeah, for the 737 is, is uh, 65 tons. 65317 to be exact, okay, 65,300 kilograms. This is your maximum landing weight. So on the maximum landing weight, if you are at 65 um, tons, as you can see, you will have a speed of 141. So if you have a speed of 141, you are out of category C. And then if you are out of category C, remember that I show you the previous, uh, or sorry, uh, the procedure that we are going to shoot. We cannot perform the procedure if the airplane is category D. We need to have an airplane category C, okay? So this airplane that we have on the Microsoft Flight Simulator, the 737-800, so far by PMDG, is a category D airplane, okay? So this is one of the reasons why I'm not performing this procedure with a 737-800. I wanted to show you this, okay? So uh, on the short field performance, the speed it drops down to 140 at, at uh, 65.3, so drops down to 140, and this is what brings the 737 short field performance to a category C airplane that is able to perform the procedure in the Santos Dumont Airport, okay? Uh, I also want to show you on the sim that this does not change with the selections that you do. Because here on PMDG, if you go to PMDG setup, aircraft and equipment, you will see here that I have, I don't really remember at uh, what stage, but it says, perform improved package, yes, short field performance, yes. So I selected everything as yes, but these only change things visually and also change uh, the slats sequence sequence on the 737-800, okay? So this changes the slats sequence, but it does not change how the airplane behaves on the sim itself, okay? I can show you, I just show you. I've selected short field performance as yes, but the, the speeds, they do not match what a short field performance is in real life, okay? I show you the documentation uh, from Boeing. This is very simple. Uh, when PMDG created this airplane, they had to, uh, let's say, input some behaviors to this airplane, okay? And the behaviors of how the airplane accelerate, decelerate, approach speeds, and every, everything that is related to performance, it's only one airplane, okay? If you select performance improved package and uh, short field uh, performance, it does not affect actually the performance of the airplane, okay? It affects all the system, for example, uh, how these slats they move if you select the uh, flaps uh, 10 uh, or not. Um, and oh, uh, a couple of visual things on the engine nacelle and 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 these things they they visually they all change but the performance itself does not change okay so you can select this yet yeah, it's very nice it's beautiful but it does not change the performance okay another thing that i'm going to show you if we are here on the sim and we go to our landing dispatch, okay? And we have Rio de Janeiro, Santos Dumont, runway zero to right, uh, dry, and then landing flaps 40, air conditioning on or off, it doesn't really matter for this calculation, anti-ice off, and then I select standard day. Zero wind, temperature 15, QNH 1013, and if you calculate this, it's going to give you a maximum weight that you can depart from any airport to land in Rio with a predicted 
weight of uh, 47.811 kilos okay which is basically nothing okay so this airplane the airplane that we have here we cannot take this airplane uh let's say here if you set empty okay the airplane has already 42 tons uh of weight okay so basically you can carry 5000 kilograms to this approach uh i don't know why my airplane is moving yeah let's stop here i didn't set the parking brake anyway let's do it uh i'm sorry about that yeah parking brake set but so what i'm what i want to tell you is that the empty plane has 42 tons okay and my landing dispatch tells me that i can land here in rio even on a dry runway with uh, 47.8 tons basically we land with three four tons of uh of fuel okay uh, so basically you you could carry two tons passenger and cargo okay so if you have uh, uh someone which is have a weight of around 75 plus 25 kilos of uh of baggage this is a uh, hundred kilos per person so if you have two tons uh maybe you will carry 20 passengers okay so no more than 20 passengers with this airplane okay this is not me telling you this is the data that we have here okay uh so basically the 737 800 by pmdg is not designed to land at this airport as you can see the runway is really short okay so even if you take uh, the short field performance and everything it doesn't really change the airplane so you are not supposed to be flying into this airport okay but i also want to show you another thing that for your simulator purposes you can fly okay and then i'm going to show you my landing in route okay so let's say that you are coming to rio same situation okay and i'm going to use uh zero wind here temperature of 15 and qnh 1013 so we have the same situation and i'm selecting 65,000 kilograms which is basically maximum landing weight with flaps 40 air conditioning all anti-ice off all reverses operative maximum manual brakes non no normal condition vref additive uh should be at least five and then you calculate with maximum manual brake is going to give you landing within the runway okay uh, you can even select maximum auto you are still within the runway so with maximum landing weight you can still land this airplane uh with maximum manual sorry maximum automatic brakes and flaps 40 and both reverses with maximum landing weight which is also not very realistic okay uh, maximum landing weight in uh, santos dumont is not very realistic but we are going from then from 47 tons to 65 tons which allows you to carry all the passengers that you want okay so it's doable you have no margin on maximum auto but you can do it on your sim i do not recommend coming here with this uh, 65 but something like uh, 55 you will see that is it gives you uh, a better uh, situation you will have 10,000 meters sorry 1,000 uh, meter uh, 1000 meters so one kilometer you will be landing in one kilometer and the runway has uh 1.3 kilometers okay uh so this is uh your actual landing on a dry runway okay 55 tons uh one more time this is not the ideal airplane for this situation but you can do it okay uh, when we think about uh, legality and how the airplane should operate realistic in the airport this airplane was not capable of coming here okay if you come to 47811 which is the maximum 
47811 and you have all of these you will see that the airplane stops in less than uh, one kilometer okay so this is the margin that you need to add 15 percent on top of these and still be uh, on on the runway uh, according to the legal requirements okay uh, so I show you this I also want to show you something something else let's go back to our standard maximum weight of 65 tons okay uh, and at this time I'm going to select the VREF 041 specific reason uh, 1013 65 uh, uh, maximum manual okay and now we have 915 I want to show you where this 915 is coming from okay so if we go back to our manuals from Boeing okay if we were in a 737-800 short field performance landing okay this is the same airplane landing with flaps 40 normal configuration okay uh, on a dry runway with 65 tons we should have with maximum manual brakes 890 but our theme is showing sorry is showing uh, 915 and if you go back and instead of using the short field performance we use only the whiskey I'm going to show you the same information now in white so okay we have only winglets normal for flaps 40 65 thousand kilos maximum manual 915 so you can see one more time that the, this airplane is not a 737 800 short field performance even if you select okay so 915 is coming from here okay uh, if for some reason let's say that uh, we don't have 65,000 kilos, we have uh, 60,000, okay? So this is 5,000 kilos below. So for 5,000 kilos below, we need to take hopefully uh, 50 meters from this uh, calculation. So we go back to the sim. Let's take uh, 60 tons. And as we calculate, it took out uh, 55 kilos, uh, more or less. Uh, so it's very close to the 50 kilos uh, that we were uh, calculating. Have in mind that this information here, the information by Boeing, it's always a little bit conservative, okay? So the standard uh, distance, okay? Uh, is the real one and all the adjustments that we do it's a little bit conservative so in real life it's supposed to be minus 55 as well from 65 to to 60 was supposed to be minus 55 but it's very close to 50 if you were doing the calculation uh, by yourself okay I also want to show you if we had a good report to break in action which means runway wet if we go with 65,000 kilos maximum manual we should have a result of one two seven zero remember this is all with vref 40 approach speed and two engine detent reverse okay that's why uh, i did the calculation with full reverse and zero on the vref okay so remember one two seven zero and let's do this calculation here on the sim let's take uh, it back to 65,000 kilos vref zero maximum manual but in, at this time we are going to select wet runway and if we calculate we have exactly one two seven zero okay so uh, one more time the data that we have for our sim okay is coming from a Boeing 737 whiskey 737 800 with winglets but not a 737 800 short field
performance okay i hope you you understand this so i hope uh you realize that you still can land the PMDG airplane in Rio de Janeiro, your margin will be reduced. I do not recommend maximum landing weight, uh, but you can play with it, okay? You can you can still do it, uh, even though this is not the airplane supposed to be there. And another thing, as I show you as well, uh, this airplane is a category D airplane on the simulator so you were not supposed to be flying this approach that we are flying today rnp ar uh whiskey okay which is only for category alpha bravo and charlie okay so this airplane is category delta one more time the category of the airplane does not change based on your actual landing weight is based on your VRF for maximum landing weight. Okay? So, so far, we have uh, almost, well, more than 50 minutes of video. So, I describe it to you uh, what is the approach that we are going to shoot, why is RNP, why is RNP AR, uh, and the airplane selection, which is the 737-700 that I'm going to use uh, for this video, okay? So next, I'm going to show you this approach. We are going to be really close to Gelut. So we are going to start the procedure on the 737-700 from Gelut, the old navigation database, okay? So here we are back uh, to the sim 737 700 this time to perform this approach we are freeze five miles before Gelut and I want to show you how this approach is coded and is displayed on the navigation display before the update okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to legs page here i'm going to change this to plan mode and we are going to see uh, step by step okay so gelut 6000 feet mandatory is there then romeo juliet 931 4800 feet mandatory is there then uh 0, 3, 1, 3, is there, 3,500 or above. Uh, 0, 3, 2, uh, 2,700 or above. Then we have 8, 0, 1, maximum 160, 1,850 or above. Note here, from 8, 0, 1 to 8, 0, 2 is not an arc turn is a direct segment between 801 and 802 which is the next one okay so 802 you have the correct speed correct altitude 1540 this should be 1540 or above but i'm going to leave the way it is here uh, right now 1540 uh, then uh, you have 803 Notice that from 802 to 803 is not a curved path, is not a radio to fix leg, is a straight line. I'm going to show you that on the uh, update you're going to see uh, the arc indicating here. Here you do not see anywhere written arc. Okay, correct speed, correct altitude. Then uh, you notice or you will think that you will see on the approach plate that from Romeo Juliet 803 the next point is Romeo Juliet 804 but if they were going to do it there will be a straight line to 804 so as they do not want a straight line they had to create two waypoints here Romeo Fox 006 which is not on the approach and Romeo Fox 007 these two here uh, two points here they are here to create this illusion of a curved path all the way to 804 but actually what we have here is a straight line between 803 and 006 and then a straight line between 806 and 007 and then a straight line between 007 and 804 note that the airplane is capable of performing this um, flyby 
okay it's capable of performing this flyby but this is not the way it was supposed to be okay there should be no waypoints here and then you have 804 and then you have runway and here the glide path is 3.0 instead of 285 that is on the chart but not a big deal to cross the runway at 50 feet then you have the missed approach 901 and then notice to go to 902 there are a couple of fixes that they had to create to create the illusion of this curved path which is the 008 009 0010 here and then you have Romeo Juliet 902 maximum on 75 is correct below 2000 feet so all the points that we had on the previous page here uh, from 901 so basically 908 nine, uh, sorry 8008 008 009 and 010 they were created to accommodate this old navigation database and then we have every and the hold there okay so i show you how uh, it's coded in the old format let's go back to the standard approach here let's release the airplane uh, so here we are flying again uh, what we need now is the next altitude 4800 I'm going to perform this landing after two months let's see how it goes uh, anyway 4800 is there VNAV is working I'm going to extend flaps one why I'm extending flaps to one now because later on I need to be maximum 160 at specific points and then 140 so I want to be fully configured by those uh, waypoints okay so flaps one as uh, FM radio team to have okay oh. uh, so basically what we we want is to be fully configured by by this point here 801 or between 801 and 802 okay uh, we want to be fully configured and one thing usually even though this is an rnpar approach usually pilot monitoring keeps uh, weather uh, sorry uh, the terrain if terrain is about or is due to show on our uh on our approach because we are approaching terrain the web uh, sorry the terrain will display on top of the weather radar okay the airplane automatically change weather to terrain if there is an actual terrain warning okay uh, of course in a beautiful day like this without clouds without uh, any type of dangerous weather uh, both pilots will be on the terrain okay i just want to show you that most probably we are going to have a terrain warning and the terrain warning will pop up on our side here on the pilot flying side even though uh weather is displayed okay so this is one of the functions of the gpws so next altitude 3500 we can already select 3500 extend flaps to five We are going to do it slowly. Oh, I'm going to give you the simulator audio. There you go. Now you can hear the airplane as well. We are getting closer. One thing uh, I had to change my visual settings on the flight simulator I drop them quite a lot because of uh, one of the projects that I have of the the home cockpit that I'm building so I put it all down so uh, I can really test the sim without any issue and then later on when I have everything tested I'm going to uh, upgrade the resolution again uh, so I know the visuals they are not really good but what is important is inside the airplane, right? 
so let me see if I have a better camera for our approach here oh this one yeah maybe this one is going to help us a little bit I just want to take this to minimum yep okay we are approaching 3500 we can go down to the next one 2700 so far this is the same for any type of approach from Romeo Juliet 031 that we are flying out towards 032 is a straight line so the airplane is going to behave exactly the same on both approaches uh, everything started from Romeo Juliet 801 those are the fixes that you have the RF legs and so they are curved paths and this is something that we are not going to see here on the sim there we go we can even see a little bit outside this is Maracanã if I'm not mistaken or Engenhão I'm sorry guys I'm not from Rio I don't really know this area but uh, this is a uh, football field for sure I always thought Maracanã was further down anyway yeah maybe this is Engenhão and we are going to see Maracanã even later on so let's continue our approach 2700 we are approaching next one 1850 so 1900 everything as expected you can already see the direct lines between the fixes things that we don't want to see on the new navigation database yeah this is Maracanã here Maracanã is coming up here if I'm not, one more time if I'm not mistaken Maracanã is here uh, now showing at the right side and this is Engenhão or any other uh, soccer any other football field okay another turn uh, we can already see the airport there so uh, I will already preset this because I'm not going to use heading cell to our final approach of 0 to 0 okay gear down laps 15 engine start switches oops this one speed brake arm it there we go next one 1600 they are really close the space we can select our minimums of 400 and select our landing flaps okay everything set when we are 300 feet below missed approach altitude we can select missed approach altitude as you can see we are going to do the approach through here you can see there are some terrain around uh, below 1700 now I'm going to wait a little bit more to select okay 2000 feet for the missed approach the airplane keeps we have path and as you can see this is not a constant turn the airplane turns and stop turns and stop okay maybe wrong speed here yeah we were supposed to be 129 126 okay this is the correct one okay so here we are on approach some terrain to the right but maybe we are going to have terrain warnings coming up maybe not we were not supposed to get it but if you notice outside the airplane is flying a straight line is not flying a curved path okay
also not doing a constant descent now he's doing the descent hope it's going to start really soon very high for this approach okay so another problem I don't know why it's configured like this as you can see out of the lines not a really nice approach this is very very high so this was not supposed to be like this at this stage you see the airplane didn't even descend as was expected to descend on the VNAV okay something was wrong here on this approach but this is not what we were expecting to see right so you were able to notice that the airplane is not capable of doing this kind of procedure okay at least not the way it was supposed to be okay I'm going to stop update my sim and come back with the new navigation database see you soon so here we are for the latest approach we are now on the new navigation database I wanted to freeze this position right now so we are basically 2 miles 2.8 miles to Gelut I want to show you this time uh, once again plan here and let's go to the minimum zoom and we are going to go through the legs page and now you are going to see Gelut 6000 931 4800 031 3500 or above 032 2700 or above then 801 160 or below 1850 or above so it's all correct so far and I'm going to go through the fixes here and now you can see between 801 and 802 is not a straight path it's a curved path that starts at 801 goes towards 802 and you're going to see that it shows here on top uh, so between 801 and 802 you can see that is an arc okay so arc is written here 802 140 or below 1540 or above then another arc so it continues with an arc towards 803 140 or below 1162 or above then you continue an arc so I think 02 means right arc and 01 means left arc or I don't really know the reason why 01 and 02 here on the Rio airplane it says the, the, the turn of the arc but anyway you can see from uh, 804 on the right arc a uh, glide path of 2.85 and then it continues toward the runway uh, 2.85 which is the correct path towards runway 02 and then you have 901 902 as you can see there are no points in between you can see here 901 straight to 902 even if we go back you can see here from 803 to 804 is just one curved path that is there are no fixes here and then after a 902 every 5500 all perfect all the way it was supposed to be so we go back here and I'm going to unfreeze this position uh, extend flaps 1 as we did before set 4800 which is the next altitude 4800 VNAV path is there and as you can see LNAV is already armed for your missed approach this is something that also you need uh, on your certified airplane to perform this type of uh, RNPAR approaches you need to have this LNAV function on the go around 
uh, activating automatically so if you press go around instead of heading cell for the lateral mode you will have LNAV that is allow you uh, to keep your flight director and even engage your autopilot during the missed approach so we can complete uh, the turn so basically uh, the standard procedure for the 737 is for you to uh, go around manually following the flight director but the LNAV will give you also the flight director uh, guidance during the missed approach and then of course according to your company uh, procedures you can even uh, start and include your autopilot on your missed approach so we will be approaching 4800 i'm going to select this camera here so we can see the next altitude is 3500 or above so we select 3500 there and there we go so you are going to see this approach one more time and i'm going to show you uh from outside also uh, especially during uh, the turns uh on uh from the intermediate peaks and beyond that you're going to see that the airplane is in a constant shallow turn of course the latest turn towards uh, the airport it's uh an uh a turn with a higher bank angle than the first the two turns but that's what you need uh, for the final approach and you're going to see that it completes at, or at least it was supposed to complete a standard and unique turn towards uh, the final. Uh, let's see how PMDG uh, handles this, okay? Uh, here we are descending nice and easy 750 feet per minute on this approach. I'm going to extend flaps to 5 So, at 900 feet to the next select altitude, we are going to s to hear the C chord telling us that we are approaching the altitude. It's going to happen now. Yep. So, next altitude, 2,700 or above. We have a drag required there. Yeah, that's why we are extending our flaps. So at uh, 801 is maximum 160 knots, we are already reducing to 158, so we are well ahead on the game. There we go. Of course you don't really need to be that slow at this point. Uh, you really need, to, uh, the requirement is to follow uh, the maximum speeds that you have on the approach but it's quite common for you to perform this approach uh, like this uh, to be well stable before so you are not in a rush especially if you have uh, some um, tailwind on, on this procedure so there we are a little bit off let's see here yeah we are zero point zero one right our RNP is zero point one and our actual is zero point zero seven actually RNP zero point one is something that you need to check on your pro I, I forgot to told you on your progress page uh, number four you will see the RNP 0.1 for this approach if you have any other approach that is not 0.1 you will see on RNAV RNP approach is 0.3 but 0.1 is what you need actually you need uh, 1.0 initially and then 0.1 for the final approach we already have 0.1 we can comply with everything okay so we are approaching 0.32 Galeão Airport on the left side, we can already see Santos Dumont Airport slightly to the right ahead of us. So that is the airport, I forgot to select the lower altitude, 1900 now, we are still on VNF path. So all the altitudes they are close the space. We are on VNAV path. I'm going to select the minimus. 
minimas of 400 feet I'm going to select the final approach course here on the heading just because I do not have a better application here so gear down laps 15 engine start switch to continuous we can arm the speed brake that will be the time to perform our landing checklist or at least the initial part of our landing checklist now we are below maximum speed for flaps 40 so we go full flaps now and you are going to or you can already see that these turns they are curved paths and let's see how the airplane is capable of doing it so we are stable the only thing that we still need to do is to set the missed approach altitude initial missed approach altitude of 2000 feet as we cross 1700 but I'm going to keep this outside and inside now for you to see this curved path note their plane is doing a shallow turn you see it's completing the turn stays on the magenta line you see this is a shallow turn now we are below 1700 we can select our missed approach altitude Oh, we got VNAV you need to keep a VNAV I selected FMC speed VNAV path yes it's doing the turn this is because of my selections here anyway I go down uh, sorry I go up to two, 2000 terrain. still VNAV path the terrain was not supposed to terrain. appear at this stage you see even with the weather radar if the terrain is there it shows up now let's see the latest turn towards the final you see it's a continuous turn you see terrain shows up if you have a terrain warning airplane is lightly off was not supposed to be like this but it's fine it's really close to the terrain in real life you do not have these warnings but as you can see constant turn towards the final and that is our airport should not stop the turn here it's a constant turn but anyway airplane is adjusting itself even if you're flying manually you can disengage autopilot and keep following flight directors so you do not have to uh, turn off flight directors you have the runway point there you can keep your autopilot down to 200 feet on the 737 I'm going to start working on my auto throttle here as you can see perfect I'm going to keep the autopilot a little bit more just for you to notice how the airplane is capable as I told you three reds one white is what you see usually this is the minimums and you just complete your approach so manual flight let's try to keep and do perform a nice landing here in Santos Dumont Airport long time I don't fly the 737 but it's all good here we go Full reverse, speed brake up. Sixty knots, either reverse, manual brakes. We go braking slowly now. Out of either reverse. We bring the airplane down to ten knots be down to 10 knots to make this 90 degrees turn here we still have 14 13 12 and here we can make this left turn here I'm going to stop because this is the end of our video so I'm going to stop here set parking brake take an outside view of our airplane 
here in uh, Rio de Janeiro so as you can see it's much better the new um, nav data so on the FMC it shows almost as the real airplane slightly different for the 02 arc and 01 arc that shows there usually you have left arc right arc showing there but as you can see you only have now the fixes that are supposed to be there uh, the VNAV behaves much better and you can even uh, fly this with your uh, autopilot to disengage and um, manually fly following your flight director on the real airplane the difference on this approach you do not get these EGPWS warnings uh, this is because of the EGPWS system that for this airport it needs to be slightly modified to not get the warnings that's also why you have a lot of speed restrictions so those uh, speeds are going to reduce your rate of descent and because your rate of descent is shallow you will cross on top of the um, the mountains on top of the hills without the EGPWS predicting that you are going to hit uh, those hills okay so this is what I have uh, for you RNPAR for the first video uh, after two months I hope you like it just to remember I show you what is RNP what is RNPAR why is RNPAR uh, the type of the airplane that I selected I show you that this airplane uh, or that 800 is not a short field performance even if you select it but uh, you are still able to do uh, some approaches in Rio if you don't if you don't go uh, to the limit of the airplane uh, related to your maximum landing weight uh, then I show you the approach on the old navigation database and on the new navigation database uh, my rate to the new navigation database the the database itself is perfect it's coming from Navrigav 10 out of 10 for the airplane behavior I would say eight and a half almost nine out of ten it doesn't really behave like the real airplane the real airplane is slightly smooth on the turns but uh, this is already uh, much better uh, than the previous one and at least now uh, we can train RNPARs with RF legs on the Microsoft flight simulator something that many airports already have for years okay I hope you really like uh, this video if you like it give the thumbs up click on the like button share this with your friends and I will see you soon most probably continuing our uh, series of video about the 777 bye bye